<laughs> These mics work better. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, we're live. <laughs> As we're inviting Ted up. Um, okay, let's make this official. Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, September 21, 2016, 430 sharp in the afternoon. We'll begin our council meeting with a roll call, please. Pete Hamill. Here. Randy Funker. Here. Brad Hint. Here. Greg Gills. Here. Zach Sawyer. Here. Thank you, everyone. First on our agenda is public comments. Do we have any right now? No public comments. So we will move on to the consent agenda. Any questions, comments regarding the consent agenda? Yes. Uh, I don't have the date in front of me, but I think it was the last council meeting, minutes. It shows Pete and I as present, and then it shows us as absent. It was the, regu the regular meeting of September yeah, 7? I think so. Okay, I so, will have to amend that. Does that mean we spaced out then? You know, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were here, but not yeah. really. We were, anyway, so that okay. absent needs to be stricken out of those. All right. I, I saw a little yeah. typo. I may I leave in this regular one too. Meeting. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a unit T hanger, or is it Unite? No, it's Unit. Thank you. Okay. I mean, just simple typos. There's a Unite instead of Unit, but that's, that's all oh, good. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> They're present and absent. Yep. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, there's also a correction to the board minutes. Okay. I don't have a copy of that, but that 1010, the board of adjustment. Yes. They had a discussion about 1010 7th Street. We have an NS 1010 7th Avenue. So you want to uh, amend the board of adjustment minutes for their last meeting? Because Steve Hollis, that's Street, not Avenue. So. Okay. Okay. Not a biggie. Any other comments, questions, then, regarding the consent agenda? If we do not, do I have, is there a motion to approve? So move. Support. Thank you. Last request. Roll call, please. Hamill. Aye. Hint. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Heels. Aye. Funker. Aye. Thank you. Going into new business, um, we have a consideration to amend uh, a development agreement, and Kurt is going to bring us up to date with where that's at and what we need to do. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Council. Um, <clears throat> just we need to amend a few numbers based on our development agreement with uh, G&E Cabinetry that we had approved back on on uh, September 7. Uh, per special provision uh, in the memorandum of understanding on the lot that's located next to the village treasure chest, um, the actual page payback on that lot is fifty thousand dollars per acre. Um, so based on that, what we're requesting the city forgive is $85,500 um, as part of the GE project that was originally approved on September 7. Uh, this forgivable amount does still fit within our typical seven-year payback, um, and it's all based on our seven. Our, excuse me, it's all based on our $400,000 minimum assessment agreement and contract for development with GE. Um, essentially, what we need to do is just amend the numbers based on that memorandum to make them accurate. So, if anybody has any questions, I'd certainly uh, entertain those and. For any clarification now this is the last lot that has that type of yes this was a unique kind of a unique memorandum that was created when uh high v in o'brien county uh, mm -hmm. implement had that special provision to move o'brien county moved high v in and high v has special or restrictions on what can be developed and have restricted areas in there so this memorandum was created specifically kind of for that, which makes it a unique type of deal. So, but it, to answer your question directly, Brad, it is. This is the last one. Everything else is pretty straightforward else, based on how we the, do business. The rest of the agreements we'll have in the future will be standard? Standard, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, then? I'll make the motion to approve the amendment. That's okay. Support. Any comments? Just making sure. All clear? All good? Yep. Okay. May I have a roll call, please? Heels? Aye. Hamill? Aye. Sawyer? I wish to abstain at this time. Punkert? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Hey, when are they going to break ground? Are they going to start soon? I'm yeah. sorry. Someone they, just asked me that, and I they, thought they we... would. They would like to get going soon. I know they, we kind of got it. Mar we met with them and marked it out last right. week. Actually, the, the dimensions of the lot. Okay. I think they're waiting on concrete. Sure. Um, right. So they want to break ground yet this fall and get cranking on as soon as possible. I think that their building is, is. I think it's 
ordered. So I think they're ready to rock Wonderful. and roll. Wonderful. So, yep. I thought you had shared that with us, but I yeah. wanted to clarify. Yep, that's yep, that is true. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, Todd, you got that microphone ready? Sure. <laughs> um, you going to read it all? <laughs> no. <laughs> you should have just sat up here with My us. My eyes are still bleeding. Yeah. Did you read it? Um, <laughs> considering the resolution of support for our wastewater facility plan, um, this we need to approve this resolution to be able to go forward with our facility plan for the wastewater treatment, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Yeah, it's a requirement from the DNR as part of our uh, NPDES permit. Okay. So there is oh. a motion to approve the resolution approving the facility plan for the wastewater improvement project. Well, one thing I did want to point out, if you caught it in the back, uh, where the cost options are, the the last time we talked about this project, I believe we shared a number of like 10.8 for the SBR. Mm -hmm. That has changed slightly. If you've seen it in the back, it's 11.4 now. Um, and is that written in stone? No, no, no of course so not. <laughs> it's not. Not and, with EPA. And, yeah, and it it was actually changes brought up by staff. Um, something that Dean and myself were talking about. We were initially intending on potentially leaving one of the buildings on site and leaving the belt press where it sits and having the office in a separate building. And there's a lot of inefficiencies there. And then we end up with two buildings to uh, maintain, to heat, and to cool. And so we asked what it would cost to add on a few square feet, move the belt press and shop over to the new facility and have one new building instead of one new building and an old building. And, mm -hmm. and we just think long term that probably makes some sense if you're talking for over the next you know, 30, 40 years that we hope to use that facility. And but at this point, it's just an estimate anyway, right? I mean, that is no, very much correct. And it's, a, and it's a rough estimate, yeah. Greg. So it could go down. It absolutely yeah, right. could go down. <laughs> Good Good one. One. Thank you. Good one. That was the joke of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it does now, because then I can rub it in a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. But. Okay. Curiosity. <laughs> what would happen if we just said, no, we're not doing it? Um... <laughs> Yeah, we'd be fine. Um, I, I would assume they would jerk the license of our operators, um, which would then cause us I'm more sure. issues. Yeah, there's there's no saying no, Pete. I understand. Been the, done that. We'd be going to outhouses. Yeah, yeah. probably. Okay. All right, any other discussion? And if not, is there a motion to approve by resolution? The support for the wastewater facility plan. So moved. Support. Thank you. Last request for comments, questions. A roll call, please. Sawyer. Aye. Kent. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Gills. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Thank you. Number five in our agenda is considering the pay request. Number two for Crossroads Pavilion. That is for the amount of four hundred thirty-seven thousand three hundred seventy-four dollars and thirty cents. And with the rain last week, did we fall behind again? Or are we doing well? Yeah, I mean, until they get the thing completely enclosed, every Getting there. <laughs> every time we get a monsoon, that makes a difference. Yeah, but uh, they're still within within completion schedule. Good. Good to hear. Okay, do we have a motion to approve that pay request? So move. Support. Do you have any questions? Have they got the ground where they need it for compaction yet? You talking about the parking lot? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll I know it, I know it'll come up again here. <laughs> yeah, we'll go over that here in a minute. We'll get okay. that to that yeah. one next. All right. Any other any questions regarding the pay request? No. Comments. Roll call, please. Hint. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Bunker. <clears throat> Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Gills. Aye. And then we have a change order on Crossroads Pavilion that was given to you as you came in here up at our desks. I see that's in a amount of reduction of 101,479.74. And do you care to share with us how they came to that and, and what how we were able to save? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so as, as soon as the project was bid, mm -hmm. There were some items on there that we felt that could potentially be value engineered. Um, so between Scott and myself 
and the general contractor and the engineer we've been talking through and some of the subcontractors we've been talking through potential areas of savings on the project um, so one thing um, to get to it here the dividing walls in the room uh, change the sound level or re, uh, the amount of sound reduction that they would hold back from a level 60 to a level 55. Uh, we're told the hospitals only have 55, some of their privacy, and that was a reduction of over $68,000. Wow. We also um, changed the covering of those walls. Uh, the committee had selected a, a, a fabric that looked nice to put on there. Um, by going with their standard covering, it still looks nice in my opinion. It saved us another like $24,000. Um, we changed uh, how the stone was going to be applied to the exterior of the building, and that came across as about a $6,000 saving. Um, so all, all told, we ended up with a reduction of uh, $121,000. The reason the change order is only to the positive of 101, of course, we've had some additions as we went along here, too. Um, we added an extra two rows of tile underneath the parking lot. We um, had issues with compaction, as Pete mentioned earlier. We are going to add some rock in some places. Uh, we added a geogrid underneath the parking lot, basically just to stabilize the, the material. That was an addition of like $10,000. So all those things combined, we end up with a current net reduction of the 101, whatever it was, the 101 and change. 104, yeah. That's nice. Okay. Thank you. There might be a couple other things like that. Sure. All I got was the uh, amount that it's reduced by. So if we need additional, if you want additional information on that, I suppose we can get those copies from Todd if you'd like to see it or from there. Yeah. And yeah, we have the complete breakdown. Yeah. Yes. So if you want that, just ask them, uh, Andrew Todd, if you'd like the complete yeah, that, list. Like a PDF or something? I can, yeah, I can. Can you email can it to us it so we have it? Yeah. Okay. I have it in email, Andrew. We can just forward it out. Okay. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind just sending that out so we do have it and can... Read it in our downtime that we have. I, I do want to make mention on the on the parking lot. Um, so when we were struggling to meet compaction on that, the initial proposal we got from the general to alleviate that issue was a seventy-six thousand dollar addition. Um, I was not in favor of that. The civil engineer was not in favor of that. So instead of doing everything at once steps and then continually checked on it until we made compaction and by doing that it saved us around sixty thousand dollars good deal instead of just approving their initial proposal so we are trying to take care of our money and not spend it if we don't need to good but yet i want a parking lot that's going to last right that'd be good that's yeah. that i know we is. have the issue out there with that street yeah caving in and right we're going to put in a parking lot we want that ground and I'm surprised didn't they notice that when they sampled that soil and everything so the majority of the soil testings were done up on the building pad okay. and, not, and not in the parking lot <laughs> and they thought through excavating a foot of the dirt drying it rolling it back in they thought they would meet it and actually it was meeting most of the densities which historically that seems to happen in town but the ground still is, it's, it's spongy, it's kind of buck. So when we would roll test it, um, the ground would like roll out in front of the trucks and then and then heave back up. So it, gets, it was really wavy. We initially thought it might have been a moisture problem, which is why I still think there's benefit to having the tiles under there because it'll drain a lot better anyway and, the, and keep the ground drier underneath the cement. But I was hoping to just put the tiles in, but when we dug the tiles in, there was no water. Well, what's next? And you kind of got to start from the bottom up because once you cover it up with rock, there's not much you can do. Um, the the geogrid, I think, is going to be our biggest thing. 
is that stabilization mat basically underneath that rock, it should move together instead of one piece moving and one piece not. That's where you really run into trouble, especially with like frost boils in the spring. And settling, the geogrid should keep everything on the plane as well. Talking over my head, so thank you. Um, any other questions, comments then regarding our Move that we order. approve the change order. Support. Thank you. Last request for comments. I had, which which change order are we talking about? The hundred one thousand. We're only, still on that this one. This is the only change order that we have. All right. In the amount of one hundred one four seventy nine seventy four. No questions, comments. We're done. Okay, Max. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Thanks. Um, number seven on our agenda, considering the request for additional civil engineering services with RDG. The letter was given to you within your packet. A few options there that we can consider. I think, Todd, you've been in touch with Mike Bell. Yeah, I spoke with Mike Bell and Brad Beck today. Um, Essentially, where Mike is, Mike, they had, they're an architect, and they had contracted with a civil engineer to come on site uh, approximately once a month, basically when we were having our progress meetings, and they could do just via their office, uh, approving submittals and that kind of sort of thing. The soil conditions not as good as what we would hope for. Um, Brad was on site, Brad Beck was on site much more than what he had anticipated. So the, the, the 5280 is basically him asking for compensation for the extra trips by the simple engineer. Um, it's more than I would have anticipated. When I spoke with Brad today, uh, I asked him what he had submitted to uh, RDG as an estimate. And he said that it was all time and materials and that uh, RDG had formed our own estimate, and he said in his experience working with architects, when it comes to the civil side of a job, they they have a bad habit of grossly underestimating what it's going to take for efforts to complete the civil side of things. They don't look or, or plan for any issues. So that's where the 5280 comes from. If you want to consider the 3500, um, I, don't, I don't believe you should just consider it. I think if anything, you should say uh, that you'll do it on contract on an hourly basis, not to exceed 3,500 because we, Beck has not incurred any or incurred any of those costs yet. Those are costs that they're just making another assumption on as we pour. And they could change um, depending upon how good of a job the contractor is doing with making sure their grades are right and forms are right on what level of inspection that we want back to continue with as they move forward. Working with a contractor that I'm not familiar with, I think it's beneficial to us in the beginning to have a little higher level of inspection, and then if things are going well, we can, we can back it off after that. And RDG is claiming that that's not in their scope of services. Now, when we did the first civil engineering out there, didn't we have a contract with Beck themselves? No, we have never been under contract with Beck. The only thing Beck we've been under contract with was for the design of the trail around the okay. around the barrel pit. Okay. But on this job itself, we are not currently under contract with Beck. So then, are these that fifty-two eighty? Is that how much is RDG inflated that price? I don't think any. Um, I think uh, that it's it's based on his amount of trips and hours on site and X amount of hours. Can he get an itemized? Yeah, Greg actually <laughs> asked for one today. And I'll let I, you go I if you want, Greg. One. He had a total of 12 trips from the period July 18 through September 14th, averaging $440 a trip. Three hours, four hours, three and a half hours. It includes two hours of travel time plus his site time. So two hour, on a four hour trip, he's two hours on site and two hours behind the windshield. So we're paying, yeah, roughly 400 to 500, $450, we'll say, 
per trip. I said, I'm just surprised that this started in July. Why weren't we informed of some of this issues as this was happening instead of? Well, the reason, the reason I wouldn't have informed you of Beck coming more often is we're not under contract with Beck. So right. I had no idea how Beck was getting paid. Okay. And you're thinking RDG just under budgeted what the cost would be with Beck. They came in less right. than what it and should And they're, they're saying that Beck had to be on site excessive over their estimation because of soil conditions. Mm -hmm. But we have a contract for him for to engineer this. Is that above and beyond that scope? Because of the soil. Is that what we're Wait, saying? Because who, of the soil uh, who problem? Who contacts back to get up here to see? I mean, is that the contractor? Is that? Uh, tip, typical chain of command would be contractor would get a hold of architect, and then architect would then get a hold of back now with some of the civil stuff when we were dealing just so okay we knew we had a problem with the parking lot soils um there were times where brad and i spoke just personally and maybe set up a meeting to do it because having mike bell from rdg drive up who's an architect is not going to do us any good his input in that in that situation is not going to be beneficial to the project so there were times when i spoke with brad or met with brad upon my request. And that's one of the reasons I brought up earlier working through Brad, and I'm not saying that I would have approved it anyways, but we went from 76,000 to 16. Because we're watching. Be because we're watching and we made appropriate changes mm -hmm. instead of just throwing the whole toolbox at it right away like they originally proposed. So originally this even though the 5000 because of the cost saving there, we're still ahead. Well, one, one could argue that. And I'm not arguing sure. that we need to no, pay more money. I'm, I'm just, just saying. I'm just, I get yeah. the soil problem. We didn't realize that was going to be there. Our DG didn't, didn't plan for that. Yeah, it kind of is a bummer that it's been starting since July and we're just now hearing about it. Right. And then moving forward with the concrete, if, if the architect does not have in his budget for the civil engineer to be on site to check grade forms and and do some efficiencies and, and concrete testing at the beginning of the project, well, then I'm not very comfortable with that because there's no civil project we would ever, no street project we would ever do without some level of inspection from the engineer. And currently we wouldn't be getting any, I guess, if we chose not to approve. Okay. So right now we're $5,280 that we need to get caught up with with Beck. And up to 3,500 is what they're guesstimating. It could go up to for the next few weeks. On what I have here, that's based on six to seven more trips at $480 a crack. Okay. Right. Which to me, the best thing to do then would be just call that 3,500 and not to exceed. And if they only make two or three trips, we pay them. You know, we just pay them time and material based time on they that. Up. Right. Right. And I don't want to see them inflating that because it's time and material. I mean. It, We've got somewhat of an idea of what we're going to looking at here in terms of right. Well, you've got his hourly rate right there, 120 right. bucks an hour. Right. Okay. Can we go through just back and not go through the? And I would, yeah, that would be the other thing. We just deal with them directly because that's the two options that he has yeah. in his letter. Mm -hmm. I would be, actually prefer that and think it'd be better. We'd be better off that I way. I think we'd be better off going right. through. And Mike may appreciate that also instead of being. Then you don't have to right. amend his contract. Right. You don't have a middle man. So option two would be RDG request back to invoice us directly to pay them for the 5280 and then the additional not to exceed 35, depending on how many more times he has to come up here between a couple days ago through the 30th. Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, not to exceed bigger 3,500 and we would pay them on a time and materials basis or hourly, you know, wait, you know, not really materials, time and. Right, just an hourly basis. Yeah. An hourly basis, yeah. All right, so it'd be option two, get an invoice from Beck and then bill us for the times he comes up based on his hourly. So how many more engineering amendments are we gonna have? Up th and this is up I through mean, the 30th, so this is up through next Friday. So I thought there was some engineering already part of that total bid and everything. So all the structural, I think all the structural and mechanical engineering is all through RDG's office. The only thing they subbed outside of their house is the civil. Okay. And 
I would, yeah, I would hope that we're getting far enough along now. I mean, we're through the soil. Soil's going to be a problem for us in a lot of projects. I would hope that we're starting to reduce our liability of other stuff coming up because we're we're 25 feet in the air. You know, we we've got walls up, we've got we've got footings poured, we've got uh, some of that stuff taken care of that I think would have caused issue. Um, I would not be surprised though, you know, with what they got laid out in the parking lot now, that we have some additional cost in getting the paving the rest of the way up to the building. For instance, I think it might make sense to just put GeoGrid under all that effective immediately when it gets poured. Now that won't get poured until next year. That might be an additional change coming down the road. Not necessarily engineering, Brad, but sure. But if, if we had to put Geo under the rest of it, oh likely the little bit we have to finish, we're going to have to put Geo under it. Right. In Mike's letter, he says our contract with the city identifies monthly site visits. So that it sounds, I'm reading that as saying, interpreting that as saying we, the engineer comes once a month because it doesn't say bi monthly, it doesn't say weekly. So yeah. the, you know he's con he's got it in there once a month as per visit, and he's made already twelve. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, this, yep. And this challenging soil conditions has required much more observations and coordination time than originally contracted for. Whoops. <laughs> Talk with my hands. I'll sit on them again. Okay. So then do we want to go with option two? Does someone, uh, are we I'll ready make to that make a motion, motion? That we go with option two, but then part B of option two, that we do it on an hourly basis. <coughs> With an amount not to exceed the thirty-five hundred. Okay. Right, is there a second? Yes. Second. Yes. Okay. Good. Any other discussion, comments, questions? I'll just say that I am learning very quickly <laughs> that working with an architect is completely different than working with a civil engineer. Um, and I had no clue how much difference that is, but it's a lot. Difference, like architects more dreamers. Let's just say they, they have a different thought process and they go about <laughs> things differently than what I'm accustomed to. Sure, I can imagine. And that would be Mike, right? Mike Bell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just as an aside, uh, I had occasion a couple of weeks ago, to, or well, a week or so ago, I had a kind of a mini class reunion and with about 10 people, and they all commented on the asking me what that building was that was going up. Uh, it is being noticed. Mm -hmm. Good. It's looking good. OK, may I have a roll call, please? Hamill. Aye. Kent. Aye. Gills. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Funker. Aye. Before we move on, I want this somewhat relates to this, and Todd and I had this conversation earlier, but we don't have the city manager in place right now. And so Todd is making some of these on on-site decisions that need to be, you know, made on a rel relatively rapid response. Do we want to, and this is not something we have to answer today, but something we need to consider that we set a limit. He can spend up to X amount, whether it's 5000 or 10000 or 50000 without having to come back to council all the time, give him that authorization, or so do we want to be managing this thing all the way along? Well, we talked about that at our last meeting when we gave them approval to be the signers as long as things fall within the budget of day to day. But right within budget, but now we've right. got this type of stuff. Probably more. Yeah. What he's getting well, at there is, is uh, uh, I'll, I'll use the tile as an example. We needed to do something to the parking lot. The first step we did was tile. That was an additional seven thousand dollars to the job. Okay. Um, I didn't want to wait two weeks for a council meeting, so I made a field order and said, "Put the tile in." because I think that's what's best for the city and, and we need to go there. Well, then we put the tile in and that didn't solve it. So now where are we at? Well, the next step is GeoGrid. Okay, when we can get GeoGrid? Well, it can be here tomorrow if we have approval. Well, it's $10,000 to put GeoGrid in. So I said, put the GeoGrid in. So what Brad's, or what Greg, I think, is alluding to is, 
is, How much do is we that, is, is, spend? Is, is that <laughs> okay? What, what was yeah. the restriction on Scott? I mean, or what, what would be the, the restriction there, on a city manager? I don't, there probably wasn't one. Yeah. But I mean, it came, this, we had this discussion today based on what's happened so far. Do, do we need to put limits on it or? If we try to micromanage too we much, stay within budget. projects going to dry yeah. out. Trust has come along just fine. He just came to us now to talk about costs. I think Todd knows if something major comes up, he's going to have to talk to us. And it's going to have yeah. to come before us. Yeah, I, and in I, Todd's I, defense, I would say he's well capable of making those decisions, maybe even more so as far as some of the civil engineering and working with engineers is what Scott was. He does it on a day-to-day -day basis. We discussed this today, too, and, and I do trust him as well. Right. But there is some some comfort in having a boundary as well. If it but maybe that boundary ought to apply to the city manager, too. I, yeah, I would agree. Okay. I guess I assume there so was one. So it's just one. something to think about, I guess, at this point. We're just, you know, Food we don't, for thought. We don't need well, to make a decision. But yeah. I'll give you an example, and I could verify this tomorrow because I have Lewis and Clark tomorrow. I th I think, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think Troy Larson can approve any change order up to, say, like $25,000 without board approval. And I'm not saying you need to make it $25,000. i am just saying I think that's for an instance, example of where they've, right. they've put a boundary. Okay. They're like, okay, in an effort to keep construction moving on our projects, Troy, you can approve up to 25000 but if it's greater than that, you may not approve it without a board meeting, which in some cases then may require special meetings and stuff in an effort to keep projects moving. I guess I assume that there was something like that in place. There's not, but I'm I think it's something we should consider down, I mean. Right, and I think we can think about that, and if we need to, we'll bring it to our next council, but we'll consider that also as we're going through our process for the next I think it just makes I don't it know if the state easier down provides the road guidelines or instead anything. Instead of point and saying you should or you shouldn't have, and you know, we, we both have it, an agreement and understand. It's mutual protection. Yes. Right. Exactly. exactly. It's, Cover your. It, it helps the employee and it helps the council. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. having a special meeting can be done. Yeah. Exactly. Just for clarification on that, are you talking about like just projects like this or are you talking about like budgeted items? You're not talking about that, are you? No, projects like this. Okay. Where, where, I mean, where if something it's within, can arise. If it's and, within the contract, right. it's, not, it's with these extras that pop up after the fact that basically, the soil's not right or this is wrong and this has to be changed. And Basically approving field change orders. Yes. In an effort to keep construction. Yeah. And we've got a lot of that coming down the road. I would anticipate. So it's maybe something we should consider. I think so. But it, it needs to be it needs to be helpful, not right. It, it needs to be helpful for everyone. We have to set it out there far enough that he can do his job, but not so right. far that so that's something to consider. Hung out to dry. For now, let's right. We can bring that back and. But well, I trust you're going to come to us if something major comes up. But I, don't, I don't know what the call. number is, but in the meantime, if something got big enough, I would yeah. just say, no, <laughs> right. I need to talk to somebody. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And thank you, Greg. We will uh, we'll think about that and see about maybe putting it on our next one, next agenda. We did a roll call, right, on that? So yep. can, okay. So number eight is considering the closeout of the joint sports complex with the school. Um, we have the spreadsheet before us of what has and has not been paid by the city, by the schools. What is left on our balance on our part is 49720 and 10 cents. Is that correct? Because yes. mine kind of washed out. Yep. Good. Okay. Do you have any questions regarding the spreadsheet that is before you? What was the initial, I wasn't on council when this, what was the initial bid of the sports complex for 50-50? Is that what, what was the total bid or initial? It was 50-50. Yeah, what was oh Sheldon's? Oh, gosh. I'd have to pull that out. For some reason, 500000 sticks in my head, but I don't right. know if that's right. Each. Each, mm -hmm. Each. Yeah, right. I thought, I thought total project was a little over a million dollars. Right. But I'm, I'm going off memory. That's mm -hmm. not and is this what we've paid to date, or is that with this amount? This is what we've paid. There's so to date, cities. we've paid five hundred forty-three thousand twenty-five dollars and forty-one cents. With this additional forty-nine thousand seven twenty to close us out, would bring our half to five hundred ninety-two thousand seven forty-five fifty-one. And I think that's just a little bit over from where we had thought it would be. Just a little over a million. But I, I Brandy, I'd have to check. 
Which we, we can see where we that can. was. I can okay. go back in the yep. minutes. We're not, it's not a, a large amount over, but I believe we're right in that ballpark. No pun intended. Nice. Thank you. I still have my T-shirt, and I want to play. I want to play a game there, and so does Ange. <laughs> <laughs> She's our gun. What's that? She's our gun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this will finalize us out by paying this. It's done deal. We will have our half paid. The school have their half paid. Just on a note, then the only thing going forward, forward that we're splitting is uh, the water and the electricity with the school. Yep. The city bills the school for half the monthly expense of water, and the school bills the city for half the electricity expense twice a year. And the mowing. Yes, I'm sorry, the mowing. Yes, we do split through Van Matron with them, yes. Who gets invoice for that? Do they or do we or does Van Matron just split it between us both? Van Matron sends those bills to the school. Oh, okay. I'll make okay. a motion to approve that pay estimate. Or close out, I should say. Mm -hmm. Support. Thank you. It's a great facility. It looks nice. It's great to see it used, and uh, the draw that it has, it's very nice. Looks good out there. Um, any other comments regarding the joint sports complex? I got okay. off the wall. Whatever happened to that soccer tournament that was supposed to be held there? They were going to be a big soccer tournament this year. I have no idea about a soccer tournament. Do you? I've seen a big soccer uh, practice in games. Oh, yeah. No, they were going to have a, a, tur a tournament this fall. I don't know. Have you heard anything? I don't know that it was this fall. I think it was actually going to be this spring. Um, but we didn't get enough teams to register to hold the tournament. Oh. oh. I didn't know you, that. There was an adult tournament going to be held out there. Yeah, that's what I thought they... Yeah. And I think they had a caterer lined up to do something. But An adult league? An, an no. adult tournament, yeah. A tournament that came into town, teams come in. Yeah, I hear. I thought you said adult tournament, but kids tournament? Is no, that what you're talking about? Uh, it tournament. is adult tournament. Some day was. That would have been nice. Things. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe in the future. Okay. Uh, now roll call? Yes. Hamill? Aye. Hint? Aye. Sawyer? Aye. Gills? Aye. Funker? Aye. Last comments. Any comments? Going around, Lyle got anything? I have to talk to you about something. Todd, you got anything more since you got your mic on and you're there? I wrote myself a note, but I can't read it, so no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you keep looking. Council, do you have anything? All right, Kurt does have something yep. he'd like to share. Real quick, I just want to update you um, based off the conversation that, or the presentation that Allison had given you um, last meeting regarding the website. The process is still ongoing. We've narrowed it down to two companies right now. We've brought it in front of the marketing committee as far as cost sharing the project, and they've agreed to pay 100% of the redesign costs of it. So at no point will we come back to the city council asking for consideration of any sort of cost sharing with the redesign. We'll continue to work with Ange and city staff and SCDC to co-opt the project as far as redesign is concerned. We've got two good companies that we're considering right now. So the, the process is moving along. I just want to let you know where we're at, and we essentially won't have to come back to council as far as any sort of cost sharing. The marketing committee is going to pick it up I also want to extend a thank you to the marketing committee for, for doing that. falls right within the realm of what uh, those dollars are used for. So. Wonderful. Time frame uh, when they hope to have that revamped or redone or no rush? It, yeah, we, we'd like to get a, a quote um, finalized here within the next week and then start relatively quickly. So it, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Take some time, though. So. Thank you. Council, anything? Um, is there a process that we're going to use to decide how we're going to manage the event center and whatever else is going along. Is there a committee that's working on that? Or there, uh, Friday is our I deadline for the RFP. Were you leaving? I was. Well, Debbie Durham's in town. We got that North oh. Side Development oh. meeting at <laughs> six <laughs> o'clock tonight, so I was going to try to bounce out and get wait, it. But that has to do with you. You just slide right back. But in. the uh, RFPs are due Friday. Friday, yes. We do have, they have the small committee. It's you and me and Randy. Zach. I was Zach. Say, was that me? Yeah. Yes. No. And, and Kevin Kane from the SCDC Kane, board has, a, has agreed to be a part of, of that committee. So Once we get those in, uh, they're due by Friday, then we'll start to begin to the re review the process. And that was a comment I was going to make as a reminder that the RFPs are due in by Friday the 23rd. So, yes, Pete, we have a plan in place once we get them in. Any other questions? Okay. No. All right. There's a plan. We just got to get them. Yeah, get and them turned in. Go then we can the evaluate them once they get turned in and go from there. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, and I was just going to 
let you all know, I think Lyle, you already know, third grade from East Elementary is coming on Friday the 30th in the morning, so heads up in the SCDC and the police department and the city offices downtown, there'll be about 100 third graders walking around getting a tour of the town. It's always fun. And let me check my notes. Uh, Tyler, are you able to read yours yet? No. All right. And <laughs> do we have a motion to adjourn? I thought I was the only one. Okay. Support. <laughs> Thank you. A roll call, please. Heels. Aye. Hamill. Nay. Sawyer. Aye. Bunker. Nay. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. The motion has passed. Business cash.